Center for Action and Contemplation presents a homily by Father Richard Rohr. The Gospel and the first reading are actually reflecting a period of uh, God criticizing Israel uh, for not being a fruitful vine. But there's really not much point in preaching a, what could be interpreted as an anti-Jewish gospel to a largely Christian crowd because we've still got the same problem. And that's why I told you I'm going to preach instead on the second reading, Paul's letter to the Philippians. Much of this letter, which might have been the last one he wrote, and he was in chains when he wrote it, so he had every reason to be anything but positive, but it ends up being the most positive and optimistic of all of his letters. He's just a few years from death. And it also is a study on what to do with your thoughts, what to do with your mind. Brothers and sisters, if you don't nip the problem in the bud right there, uh, you're dead in the water. In one of my books I quoted, of all people, Eleanor Roosevelt, who really was a quite wonderful woman, and she's supposed to have said this, watch your thoughts, they soon become words. Watch your words, they soon become your actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. And watch your character, it finally becomes your destiny. But notice how she starts. Watch your thoughts. Now, if you could read again that lovely second reading from Philippians, you could see that that's precisely the advice that Paul is giving you. And he's teaching us that in effect, we find it hard to find the peace of Christ because the natural way the mind functions and just watch your own. I don't need to say it. So, well, I probably do need to say it, but we don't see it. The mind likes to operate according to contrariness. It likes to be against something. It likes to have someone else to criticize, someone else to uh, attribute all the problem to. And for some reason, uh, if you can base yourself in anger and criticism and judgment and fear, this makes you feel quite wonderful. I don't know why, but uh, it makes you think the problem is elsewhere. It's not you, it's always the other people in the family, the other people in the house, the other people in Holy Family Parish. Always, always, always someone else is the problem. Now be honest, you know you do that. And I do too, and I'm ashamed of it. But I'm working on it, and I've been working on it all my life. And what he gives you here in, in Philippians is advice. I guess Norman Vincent Peale would have called it the power of positive thinking. That if you don't actively work for positive thinking, I'm telling you, your thinking goes negative in almost everybody. Everyone, you like to think critically of other things and other people. And as Eleanor Roosevelt said, pretty soon that takes over your actions, your behavior, your character and your destiny, and you end up a grumpy old man or a nasty old woman. And we don't want any more of those. I'm sure there aren't any in this church, but that's the way you go if you don't nip it in the bud right up here. So listen again to what Paul says. Now again, I remind you, he is in jail, literally chained to the prison wall. And yet he says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about this. Yeah, my, there it all is. You've got to work every hour of every day to fill your mind with positive thoughts. 
And if you don't, you're going to become a negative person. It's that simple. You can't feed negativity up here all day. You can't be, be judging people, critiquing people, dismissing people with your mind, because that's finally the energy that comes out from you. Not positive energy, but negative energy. You are your thoughts. And we think that, well, I can think negative thoughts, but I'll put a smile on my face. Well, it won't work. Because people can see that the smile is not sincere. That underneath it, you're angry, you're judgmental, you're negative, and you're fearful. He says, keep on doing what I'm teaching you, and then the God of peace will be with you. So to attain the peace of Christ is not just greeting one another and saying, peace of Jesus be with you, I hope you do that. But you've got to work for the peace of Christ. And, and when negative, contrary, oppositional, antagonistic, judgmental, and fearful thoughts enter your mind, you've got to hand that over to God. Otherwise, it takes over. He says toward the beginning, and I use this in the teaching of prayer, he says, may the peace of Christ which surpasses all knowledge, guard your heart and guard your mind. You have to guard both of them. You can have a negative mind, but you can also have a hard heart. And if you don't keep watch, watch on both of them, that's where they go. And if you've been feeding that since six o'clock in the morning, well, by noon, you're dead in the water. <laughs> It's going to be very hard for the love of God to flow through you toward anybody because you're all blocked up. So this might seem like just oh, a little interesting idea that might be helpful. In some ways, in some ways, brothers and sisters, it's the heart of the matter. This is how real the Christian life has to become. If we can't work at it on this level of our inner thoughts, nothing else works. So let me read Eleanor Roosevelt once again. Watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your very character. And watch your character. It will become your final destiny. This homily by Father Richard Rohr is copyrighted by the Center for Action and Contemplation. Visit cec.org for other educational resources and programs.